So slide number 26 is where we're going to pick up. Um, we're going to be looking at these mixtures, right? And so when you have mixtures, one um, easy way is you can use physical properties to separate those mixtures, those things that are in a mixture, to get them so that they're all their individual um, kind of uh, parts or their own individual substance. So, you know, you could look in that mixture from the study jam and you can visibly pick out the pretzels and, you know, the other pieces and parts of that mixture, right? Um, so sometimes just visibly, you're able to see what's going on. Other times you might have to use, you know, some other things to kind of help you out a little bit. So separating a mixture, um, using physical properties. And so if you would use a magnet to possibly separate out the non-magnetic from the magnetic things, like if you have iron and sand, that was one of our examples. If you take a magnet, the iron is going to be attracted to the magnet, but the sand is not. So it would remove the iron, but it would leave the sand. Okay. So the property that would be used is magnetism. And that's a pretty basic idea, I think. Um, and this is kind of what you guys are going to do when you do the mixture separation lab probably next week. You're going to have a bowl you're gonna, or a container and you're going to have different things that you can use to um, use physical properties to separate these, this mixture out. So this might be something that you would want to try to do. Um, we had talked briefly uh, last week about a centrifuge when we talked about blood, right? There are different components to blood. And so a centrifuge device is something that's going to separate the solid pieces from liquid. Um, it also can separate liquids that have different densities as well. All right, so it's not always just solids and liquids that it can separate out. But it's going to spin around like a washing machine. I don't know if they still have this ride at the fair or not. Do they have the Gravitron or Zero Gravity ride? Like where you like kind of are against the wall and it spins you around and like you feel like you can't lift your head up like you're like sucks you back do they still have that or has anybody been yeah. on that ride yeah it i've been on it in the past and okay i'm able to move on it but it's kind of like a gravity move you yeah it's really you hard isn't it you can't move but you can move and feel like you have enough strength to lift and stuff like that but it's definitely a lot harder than you would normally experience like that 10 times earth gravity yeah, I don't know exactly how much, but it is a lot stronger for sure. So this is kind of the process that happens in, let me pull up the picture, the centrifuge machine. You put these test tubes of whatever it is you're trying to separate out, and they spin around. And as they spin, it pulls the more dense material to the bottom, and the least dense material goes up to the top. Right? So it can separate out those different things. And the property that's being used is going to be density. All right, so this is the way it looks where it's like a homogenous mixture. It looks like a solution all mixed up nicely. And then once it comes out of the centrifuge machine, we can see this is the most dense, this is the least dense, and you see some different components throughout there. Yes? That's why I say not to go on that spinning ride if you just eaten, because some of the food might still be not that chemically altered, and it might unfuse in your stomach just like it does in the centrifuge. Possibly. Well, while it's still digesting. Ugh. You're, you're looking a little bit too intense. That's, ugh. But that, could. It could. Yeah, that could make you really nauseous. Yeah, it barely could. So, All right. don't eat and then go on to that ride. Good plan. All right, so filtration is going to be another way that you can remove bigger pieces from smaller pieces. Again, this is a pretty basic idea if you think about it. Um, Think about if you've ever made macaroni and cheese. Anybody here ever made that or made spaghetti noodles or any kind of noodles, right? When you have the noodles and the water together, that is a heterogeneous mixture. It's actually a suspension because you have solids mixed in with the liquids. So when you go and pour the, um, you know, like the pan into the strainer, you let the water filter through, leaving your noodles in that strainer or colander. Right? And then you can do whatever you're going to do with the noodles, put spaghetti sauce with them or the cheese powder or sauce or whatever you're making. Right? So every time you've made macaroni and cheese, you're actually using a filtration system and the property that you're actually using is size. Right? That's one of our physical properties. So sometimes just using something size 
is enough of a factor to get it to separate out. Right? So the noodles aren't small enough to go through the holes in the strainer or the colander, and obviously it leaves the noodles where you can deal with them with just noodles, and then you can finish your cooking process, whatever that may be. Okay? So these are three very simple ways that you can um, use physical properties that we've already talked about to separate out a mixture. Um, and again, this can work, sometimes it works good with solids and liquids, sometimes it works better if it's just with solids, sometimes it works better if you just have all liquids. Um, so you just kind of have to depend on like what the situation is calling for, and that will let you determine what, you know, is the best way to go about um, separating something. So we're going to stop there.